Hi, my name is Ariella Weinstein from West Coast NCSY, and welcome to the NCSY Alumni YouTube channel. So today I want to learn a little bit of Torah with you about this week's Parsha, which is Parsha Mishpatin. So last week we read in Parsha Yitro the amazing moment in B'nai Yisrael's history, which is Matan Torah, the giving of the Torah to B'nai Yisrael. So after this moment, we see in this Parsha what was B'nai Yisrael's response. Two very famous words, Na'ase v'nishma, we will do and we will listen. So one of the more famous explanations on these two words, um, or more famous questions on, this, on these two words, is why do B'nai Yisrael say, first we will do and then we will listen? Normally, if you're about to do something, you first listen to the instructions and then you commit to doing it. You generally don't want to commit to doing something before you know you're, what you're getting yourself into. But this was the loftiness of B'nai Yisrael and the incredible um, rising to the occasion that they owned up to after Matan Torah. After this amazing revelation, they, they say, it doesn't matter what you're going to tell us. We want to do it. We appreciate you, Hashem. We respect you. We want to follow your commandments. And so we will commit to doing it first, and then we will listen. But another explanation or question on these words is brought up by Rabbi Yosef Dubsalavichik in his Sefer, the Beis Halevi. And what he asks is not only why do they say it in this order, but why are they saying, Na'asa we will do and we will listen. Obviously, if we're responding together, we're saying we, but each individual person of B'nai Yisrael is said to have said, we will do and we will listen. Normally, if I'm committing to doing something, I say to my instructor, my teacher, whoever is telling me something, I will do it and I will listen. So what is B'nai Yisrael doing? Why are they saying we? So what the Beit HaLevi says is that B'nai Yisrael were accepting the Torah on two folds. They were saying, I, as an individual, will take on the commitment of the Torah and fulfilling its commandments, but I will also take upon it as the we, as an obligation to ensure that all of my people are accepting the Torah themselves. And so there's an interesting midrash associated with this, with this um, commentary that the Beis Lady brings up about two angels that came to give um, to the crowns to B'nai Yisrael after saying Nasev and Ishma, this amazing um, response. But not only did were they given these two crowns, each one, one for Nasa and one for Vinishma, but they were also given a sword. And so what did this sword represent? It represented the responsibility to ensure that everyone else was doing it. But nowadays that wouldn't really work out so well. We can't force people to follow the Torah by taking a sword to their neck. So what, did, what could this possibly mean? So what the Behalevi explains is that it really just represented the onus of making sure that our friends, our family, our peers, our community is keeping the Torah. It's saying that by, by B'nai Yisrael responding in this way, Hashem was handing over this responsibility to each individual to say to them, lead by example, don't do mitzvot just for yourself. Don't do mitzvot just because you think it's right, but really inspire everyone else around you to do the mitzvot as well. As much as it's great for me to learn Torah in, in private by myself, it's really important to also show people that learning Torah can be great and doing mitzvot can be great and involve everyone else in the process. That was what B'nai Yisrael took upon themselves at Matan Torah by saying, Na'asev and Ishma. They were taking upon the responsibility to lead by example and to show everyone else that following the Torah and following the mitzvot can really enhance your lives. Um, and I hope we can all take this message to our lives and really make sure that we're not just doing mitzvot for ourselves and not just doing them in private, which is also great, but to make sure that we are leading by example and inspiring other people who wouldn't necessarily know what the different mitzvot are and making sure that all of, all of us, all of B'nai Israel, can have the same fulfillment that we ourselves have from doing the mitzvot. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to learn with me today and have a wonderful Shabbos. Thanks.